Hey, welcome. Big Papa here. I've got some great information for you. Just discovered it because I've been researching this and man, I am so excited to share it with you. A lot of people ask me about intermittent fasting. It's kind of catching on. A lot of people are turning to it and getting some great results. And so today I'm going to talk about the perfect intermittent fasting ratio and coupled with that, autophagy. Autophagy is self-cleansing. So let me first talk about uh, autophagy and then I'll get into how intermittent fasting helps that and then get into the perfect ratio. So what autophagy is, I've, you got your cell here and you're losing me in the, let me see here, let me get that over there. Okay, you have a cell and at the cellular level, we know that a billion cells a minute are dying off and being replaced. And yet, even though that sounds like a big number, it could be better. When you have a cell that dies off, I have inside of here DNA. And when that cell dies off, it creates a brand new cell, brand new cell. Cells die off and they get old, decrepit, they're, they're dying, if you will, and you want them to replace with a new cell. And the Nobel Prize in 2016 in physiology by a Japanese gentleman discovered this principle called autophagy. Autophagy is healthy. Autophagy is, is this happening on a big basis. When you intermittent fast. Why is autophagy work? Okay, let's get into that for just a second. I got to just get this so you, you really catch the vision of it. When people put a lot of glucose in their body, especially a lot of sugar, the average American eats something like 77 pounds of white sugar a year. We have a sugar society. It's in everything. Just go down your store and look at canned goods. Almost every canned good, high fructose corn syrup or, or starch or corn starch or sugar. And when the body has a lot of that in us, the body has all this extra fuel, if you will. And when your cells over here get old and decrepit, and you got all this sugar in your body, they don't die off. Because in autophagy, what happens is when this cell dies off and you create a new cell, this old dead cell through the liver creates more fuel. And as you intermittent fast, insulin levels drop, fat burning takes place. That's why I got it here, fat burning takes place. And who doesn't need to lose some weight? 80% of Americans are overweight, almost 40% are obese. <clears throat> and the key to getting rid of weight is intermittent fasting using these ratios. And, it's, and in this discovery of autophagy, when you intermittent fast, when you drop insulin levels, when you get rid of all that extra glucose in your body, then your body needs its own fuel. It's going to burn fat and it's going to kill off old dying cells that for now are staying inside your body making you, oh, I don't feel good, I got achy joints, I can't sleep at night. All, all of those ailments that come with generally correlated to extra weight. So when you intermittent fast, autophagy is on steroids. Now here's the beauty of autophagy. And I want to get into this because I'm going to put a plug out for a, a great product. Seriously, you can do all your own research on it. There's only one of the kind. You have DNA inside of those cells. And at the tips of those DNA strands is called a telomere. And as this process has happened over and over and over and over and over again from the time you were a little baby until your age, those tips on the telomeres get shorter. And as William H. Andrew, PhD, who discovered a lot of the science behind telomeres, when your, when your telomeres get short, bad things happen. And so in the process of intermittent fasting, doing this autophagy, you want that DNA 
to be healthy. One way to do that is to get rid of oxidative stress. One way to do that is to eat healthy. One way to do that is, is to eat right, to, to sleep. The other thing here is I'm going to put a plug in for Isogenesis Product B. It's the only product on the market. I've been using it for like six, seven years since it first came out. And it supports telomere health. So as you intermittent fast, start losing weight, start to feel better, and you're, you're replicating all these cells, you want that new cell to be as strong as it can. It's the fountain of youth. If you feed it, just as I said, and even with product B, it's going to work. Now, let me get into the intermittent fasting ratio. I've got three clocks here. They're 24-hour clocks. I've got 24 up here. I've got 6, 12, and 6 p.m. And so intermittent fasting in the 60s, most Americans, most Americans only ate three meals a day. They'd eat a breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and they didn't eat in between. And so, but now most Americans are taught through the carbohydrate companies to snack. We are a snacking society. In fact, the number of calories uh, increase since the 60s, over 250 calories a day increase. Is there any reason to not believe that those extra 250 calories has led to an obesity epidemic in our country? Part of it's because they're our eating cycle. If you could just drop down to three meals a day, no snacking, you're gonna be fasting, let's say you ate at 6 a.m. to noon, six hours, 12 to 6 p.m., six hours, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., 12 hours. The proper ratio is 18 to 24 hours intermittent fasting, three meals a day. The next goal after you get to the three meals a day is to shorten the span between your breakfast and and you call it anything you want, that first meal of the day to the last meal of the day. So if you can shorten that span, maybe you extend breakfast longer. That's for me. In fact, ask yourself this question when you get up in the morning. Ask yourself, am I really hungry? Most people aren't hungry in the morning, yet they're so schooled in eating. I mean, my kids, when they're here, uh, my older kids, it's cold cereal because what they had was a kid. We didn't know any different, my wife and I. And so if you can shorten that, let's say to 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. So now you're fasting from 3 p.m. until 10 a.m. the next day, two meals a day. That's 19 hours of fasting. You're in this range. And the key is to get down to one meal a day. According to Dr. Eric Berg, he is one of the leading authorities on weight loss in this country, practices in Atlanta, Georgia, great YouTube videos, he says the biggest weight loss statistically is when people eat one meal a day because what they're doing in essence, it may be a big meal. It may be a 2,000 calorie meal that takes you an hour and a half, two hours to eat because I've done that. One meal a day, let's say you eat at noon. So you're going from noon to noon. That's 23 hours of fasting. That is way into this ratio. And that's the key to intermittent fasting is don't eat, drink water, get your minerals, vitamins, put product B in you because autophagy is going to kick in and you're going to be burning off all those old crappy cells, self-cleaning through autophagy, spurred by intermittent fasting. And so you want weight loss and I don't care what product you get on or don't get on, if you just eat one meal a day, and do the following. Oh, I didn't put my list down, but here's the list. High intensity interval training. Hit. That's to where you're exercising, but you get warmed up, and then you might do 10 30 second intervals really hard. Maybe you're on an elliptical, maybe you're running on a treadmill, whatever. You go hard for 30 seconds. You just blast it and then you rest for 30 seconds, and then you do it again. You do that 10 times, that's it. There was a study in Canada that showed that uh, relatively, if, if a person worked out an hour a day, slow cardio, they call it, 
for an hour a day and they did five minutes of hit a week. So five hours versus five minutes a week. The Canada study showed in comparison that the hit provided more fitness, more weight loss than going for an hour. So do in high intensity interval training like twice a week. If you're younger, you can do more. But if you're like my age, like I can only do once a week in this Ironman training. I've done tw two, two times during a week, but do that. Number two is sleep more. That's it. Sleep more. Number three, I can't overemphasize this. Cut your carbs to 20 grams a day plus all the vegetables you can eat. Eat a big salad. You want to get eight to 10 cups of green leafy vegetables a day. That'll give you your potassium. And then cut the carbs to 20 grams a day. If you just do that, Limit some of your protein. A lot of people, when they cut carbs, they fill up on protein. And the protein number is you take your lean body weight. So in my case, I'm 182 pounds with 14% body fat. So I let's round the numbers to make the math easier. Let's say I had 10% body fat and I'm 180 pounds. So I have 10% of 180 is is 18 pounds. So you take 180 minus 18 pounds is 162. So I have 162 pounds of lean body weight. Multiply that by 0.7 to 0.9. Take your lean body weight times 0.7 to 0.9. That'll tell you how many grams of protein you need each day. So you do that amount of protein, cut your carbs to 20 grams a day, plus all the vegetables you can stand to eat, do HIT training, intermittent fast, get up to one meal a day, and you're going to shed some serious weight. And you're going to call me and say, Mike, this is working great. It's the best thing I've ever done. I feel good. My insulin levels are drop. If you're a type 2 diabetic, it, according to Dr. Eric Berg, it'll cure your type 2 diabetes. According to Dr. Jason Fung in the Complete Guide to Fasting, he makes that claim. He says you can completely get rid of all your type two diabetic symptoms by intermittent fasting and cutting carbs. Anyway, I hope this helped. It's a great day today on Thursday and you guys rock. I hope this helped. Send me some comments on what you think of what I just said and if you've done intermittent fasting, I'd like to hear, hear what your res, uh, results have been. Anyway, you guys take care. See ya. Bye.